Texas. Meantime, classes at Chicago Public Schools begin exactly one week from today. That's August 21st. That's also the deadline for CPS to train at least two employees at each of its 600 plus schools in the use of student restraint and timeout. That deadline one week from today was set by the state back in 2021. And if school districts don't comply, they do risk losing state funding. Samantha Smiley is a reporter with Chalkbeat. She joins us now. Samantha, thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. Well, first of all, let's go back and talk about how the issue of restraining students and timeouts, things like that, became an issue that lawmakers sought to address. Yeah, so that was due to a ProPublica and Chicago Tribune investigation um, that was published in 2019 about how restraint and seclusion was used across the state um, and how harmful it was to students at um, school districts around the state. And over the course of time, they have made some changes, but yet there's still this training that needs to happen. And we're a week away from the start of school and from that deadline coming up. Does it seem to you like the training is going to get done? So in Chicago, so Chicago Public Schools is a little bit different from other school mm -hmm. districts across the state um, in, in that they have been um, violating the state law in terms of not having tra uh, staff trained in how to use restraints and uh, secluding students. Um, it looks like right now that the district has been working to train at least two um, staff members per school building. And as you all mentioned, that's 600 schools, mm -hmm. but it's really hard to tell like if they will be in compliance by the 21st. Um, hopefully next week, the State Board of Education will let us know if they, if they have. And when we talk about school staff using restraint techniques on kids, whether it's in the city or the suburbs, um, you know, a lot of that can involve a child going through a mental health crisis or having some other issue where there can be a threat, not just to staff, but to other students. So what is it about this training uh, that they hope to, to, to accomplish? Is it just kind of teaching everybody the right way to do it? Yeah, like, as you mentioned, there are cases um, where students need to be restrained. Um, and a lot of times we do see this for students who have disabilities. Um, but what has what the state board points out in their reports is that those staff members haven't been trained to provide to, to safely perform restraint. Um, and that is that's a big problem because also in those cases that was cited by the State Board of Education, the district um, staff members in the district were using um, outlaw methods. And so it's really important for staff to, you know, keep students safe while they're doing these restraints. All right. So you've been covering this over the course of, you know, months, it seems like. Talk to us about what you've been hearing or getting from either CPS or perhaps teachers or parents as to what is causing the slowdown in getting some of this training done. I, I think for educators who I talked to about this issue, um, there were a lot of people who wanted to get trained and were getting trained, but the pandemic hit. And so a lot of their uh, certifications for training actually lapsed. And so now the, the district kind of in the process of trying to make mm -hmm. sure that everybody is up to speed with training. Um, just catching up. All right, mm -hmm. Samantha from Chalkbeat, thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Have a good day. You too. Uh, you too.